So we always need to um, kind of, you know, know what we're going to do in case something presents itself. You might be on an airplane and somebody just start talking. That happened to me not, I think, um, earlier this year, before March, of course, um, where a gentleman, we were sitting in um, first class, and he just started talking and, and asked me what I did. I told him what I did, and that, like, opened a floodgate. This man wanted to talk now because he had, he had a preacher next to him, and it probably doesn't happen very often, and it was an incredible conversation about salvation and Jesus and what he's done and so on. It can happen to you when you least expect it. You might be in a line at a grocery store where, where you sense somebody's troubled or somebody's crying. Or, and we just need to just be bold enough to just put an arm on somebody or just, just reach out and say, can I, are you okay? Can I pray with you about something? Or... And, and be ready to share the gospel in season and out of season. It'd be great if we had all our ducks in a row and, and uh, we planned, that, well, I'm going to share with this one today. And, but it really doesn't happen that way, as you know. It happens in life, in real time. And ladies and gentlemen, without trying to sound critical, and I don't mean to, but we have missed so many opportunities because we have not been prepared. We are, I remember after 9-11, um, I have friends that minister in New York. Um, I, know, I know several pastors. I know rabbis. I uh, have a dear friend who is um, a Christian leader in New York, and I, were t I was talking to him one day, and I said, Jim, I heard that on 9-11 or the day after, churches were packed, and he said they were. They were. We couldn't even get people in the churches. They were so packed, and I said, where are they? And you know what he said to me? Joe, we were not prepared. We were not ready. We didn't have materials. I mean, it was just something that it took us totally by surprise. Nobody could have planned something like that, which is true. But he said, we lost an opportunity on 9-11 that I pray God forgives us, but it will never happen to us again. We are ready ready, ready all the time. They live ready now, many of our churches, and they're ready for an influx because they know anything can happen. We're living in an hour where, where it is so, um, you know, it just up and down. And, you, you know, I, I wake up in the morning, I want to flip the TV on just to see what happened while we were sleeping. I mean, it's just the world is changing so fast, dramatically fast. And so we need to be prepared Choose the verses, ladies and gentlemen, that are, um, that are uh, important, that are comfortable for you to share. Memorize them if you can. Use a Bible if you have one there for sure, as we talked about. But get the verses that you know you're going to need when you share the gospel. Sometimes people just share a testimony, and that, that's good. Don't misunderstand me. I mean, I love our testimony. is very powerful. But I don't want to share my testimony without sharing the scripture because the power of the testimony is really the word itself that's what changed my life that's what's changed your life and that's what's going to change the life of the person that you're talking to so choose verses maybe some of the ones we've given you tonight these eight or ten verses whatever it is maybe some of those verses are going to be the verses you will write on a card write in your bible Put them somewhere and memorize them that when you, when you have opportunity, you can begin to share them. And it's not going to be something that is um, awkward for you because you'll be ready. You'll be ready in season and out of season. Try, as I said already, try to memorize the verses if you can. There is something very impressive about a man or a woman who can just start quoting the Bible. And you know that, and I know that. And, and certainly somebody who's not a Christian, when they hear that, I mean, I've actually rattled off verses before where somebody said to me, is that really in the Bible? And that's a perfect opportunity to grab your Bible and open and say, it sure is. Here it is. So they listen. And so we need to try to memorize them because, again, it will help you being instant in season and out of season. Um, Highlight verses, as I mentioned earlier, that I've done in my own Bible. Highlight those verses and, and uh, somehow make it easy for you to get to them and then know where the next verse is and so on and so on. And again, if you had a half a dozen, if you had eight verses, that would be probably more than enough. It's a good start. 
and get people moving um, in the right direction. And then finally, and I want to say this, stay in the Scriptures. Sometimes we get very wordy when we're talking to people, and we forget that the power is really in the Scriptures themselves. Sometimes we talk about a lot of different things. And again, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that because there may be something that is of interest to the person you're talking to, and it may be very valid. But always bring it back to the Scripture. Stay in the Scripture. Always remember the Scriptures are the power of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Drop down a few verses in John 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So now we have the Logos, His, his Word, who, and the Word is Jesus, who now becomes flesh and dwells among us. Those are powerful verses that you can share with people and, and show them the, the, um, the eternity, if you will, of the Word of God and, of course, Jesus Himself. So stay in the Scriptures. Stay in Bible study. Um, if you're Wednesday night, great opportunity to just, you know, plug in on Facebook right now, and we can learn some new things, and, and we can really learn to kind of sharpen or hone our skills and so on. Uh, I have Bible studies um, every week. We do one on, we call Torah Tuesday. I have a study every Tuesday um, with a Jewish gentleman from New York who is a great Hebrew scholar who is a, a just loves the Christian church and loves Christians. He's a tremendous man, and um, Every Tuesday, I, I, I can't even begin to tell you how much you glean from just hearing the Word being taught. Just, and the nuggets you pick up, the things you learn are just absolutely amazing. Stay in the Scripture. And by the way, before I leave this, the Bible itself says that the Holy Spirit was sent here to testify of Jesus, to teach us of Jesus, and certainly to take His Word and magnify that word. So we have the indwelling spirit of the Lord who can bring to our minds only, only if you've studied and stayed in the word. I mean, if you don't know the verse, it's probably not going to come to your mind. But if you're staying in the word, the Holy Spirit has now something he can use to prompt you and say, share this, do this, and so forth. And so we want to stay in God's word. All the statistics today is Bible reading has dropped, If I, I think I just saw this, oh, in the last couple of weeks, Bible reading has dropped over 10% in the last decade by believers. Now, you may say, well, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. No, it, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but if you knew how many people read their Bibles and you lost 10% of that, you think it's tragic because most people don't read their Bibles. I'm talking Christians now. I'm talking most believers do not stay in the Word, certainly on a daily basis. Some do, but that percentage is very small. People that read the Bible every day is probably in the area of somewhere around 20 to 25 percent of Christians. That's all. And it goes up, you know, weekly, some more read it and so forth. But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Can't say this enough. Stay in the Word because it's going to be what you need at any time, at any moment, um, you're going to have that in you, and you're going to be ready to be used by God. All right, let's move from there. So we're talking about being prepared and how to be prepared. Get those verses down, highlight them, use your Bible, stay in the Scripture, but let's stay focused now. It's important for you and for the person you're witnessing to. If you don't stay on track, the other person is not going to stay on track either. Sometimes we, we let our minds run or we're thinking about something else. Stay focused when you're witnessing to somebody. And again, it comes in all kinds of, you know, shapes and forms. It comes in the supermarket. It comes in an airplane. It comes in a car when you're carpooling or whatever. But stay focused on your topic and let God use you. If you're talking the plan of salvation, then definitely stay focused and at least get through that plan before you go on and start addressing other issues. And by the way, uh, and this happens a lot. It's happened to me in my lifetime. I can't even tell you how many times where you're, you're sharing your faith with somebody. And yeah, but what about this? And how can there be a God if all these bad things happen? And what about this? And, and I usually say, you know what? I'll try to answer that in a moment. Let me stay with this and let me share with you 
God's plan for salvation. Then we'll get to those questions. Now, that's a good way to handle that because you don't want them to think you're ignoring them or they're going to think they've got it up on you and you don't have an answer for them. But you don't want to get sidetracked when you're witnessing. So stay focused. And then, and this is a big one, the next point. Speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. Nothing confrontational about our attitude. Don't, it, it's, it's just too easy to get upset by the things that people do or say. Don't be confrontational. Speak the truth in love. We, we cannot lead a person to Christ if we're pushing them away from us with an overly aggressive attitude. Now, I have personally witnessed people witnessing that way. I have seen, I have heard people, I, I mean, I have to tell you, I, I can remember hearing people sharing their faith, and I'm standing next to, next to them just like shuddering, like, oh my goodness, how in the world is that person ever going to respond to the gospel? Um, we can't, we just can't come across angry. We can't come across as know-it-alls, or we, we've got one up on you. You need to join our group, and so on and so on. And don't get into church life or anything. Like, get into the life of Jesus. Look at his life and how he communicated the truth. And he did it, of course, always in love. Why were people drawn to him? Why were little children drawn to him? There was something about him that just exuded realism. It, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't like the scribes and the Pharisees and their religiosity. It wasn't like so many of us as we are institutionalized after being in church for so many years. It happens to all of us. We become very institutional, and we think our way is better or the only way, and, and we know better than they do. And listen, if you get into that kind of um, area of wrangling, especially denominationally and things like that, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose the person you're talking to. Stay in love. Look at the life of Jesus as you're reading through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as you're reading the Gospels on the life of Christ, how he ministered, who he ministered to, um, the, the stories, the object lessons he gave, all the, the beautiful things he did, and no wonder people were attracted to him. And of course, he, the power of God was on him. He would lay hands on people that were healed. That also helps. Um, I always tell people, never, ever be afraid to pray with somebody because they, even though it would be very, you know, like um, out of their comfort zone, if you do it correctly and if you honor them and if you bless them in the prayer that you're praying, you would be amazed the walls that come down. And I've seen it happen before. So speak the truth in love. Be pleasant in all that you do. Um, it's kind of a lost art today, ladies and gentlemen. We're I don't know why. Uh, I mean, we've we've be probably just we're harsh sometimes because of the things that we see and hear and run into, and we get irritated and aggravated, and um, we've just got to somehow go beyond that, and we've got to be pleasant with everyone um, that we come in contact with. Listen, stay away. By pleasant, I mean don't don't degrade, don't put somebody down, don't say things like, um, uh, oh. You'll have plenty of time someday to, or you better hope you don't die today. I've actually heard somebody witnessing and said that once. You better hope you don't die today. It's like, wow, that'll make me want to run to Jesus. Um, how about this? Uh, you'd wish you've listened if you go to hell and you miss him. Uh, those are not good ways to witness. You want to be pleasant and loving and, and just honor people. And, and the best way, of course, we've, we've talked about this numerous times, the best way is to be a friend. If you know them, if you work with them, if it's somebody that is in your neighborhood and, and there's a relationship there, that's the perfect place to start. You would never, I mean, we talk to people we don't know um, in a way that we, we just shouldn't, and we wouldn't talk that way to our next door neighbor, I don't think, because there's a relationship there. So just somehow push through, and when you're witnessing to anybody, whether they're a neighbor or not, work on relationships because, Lord willing, you're going to see them again, and you're going to get another opportunity to share even more. Don't force yourself or your presentation of the gospel on anyone at all. And remember this. 
The Bible says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world. It doesn't say, for God so hated sin. Now, he does, we know that, but you're not going to reach them that way. You're going to reach them by sharing that God so loved the world. And if the Christian church, man, we're, that's an element that I'm convinced if we, uh, if we were walking in love, and it goes for all of us, if we walked in love, and cared, I mean, deeply cared for, for the benefit of others. If we, if we did the simple things that we all should be doing, but don't do sometimes. When somebody's moving, somebody has a need, somebody's hurting, um, why aren't we using those opportunities to go there and, and say, listen, let me help you. I, I've got a couple hours today. I'm going to run over there, and we're going we're gonna to do this. Um, anytime we can do something like that, you're, you're adding, you're building, you're, you're bringing them to a new level, and they're going to see the Jesus in you through your lifestyle. Uh, let's talk about perception. Be perceptive. There are many times where people literally and really don't have the time right now for you to share with them. Don't get turned off. Don't get upset with them. It's okay. There will be a better time. It might be really good if you just say, listen, if, we, if you don't have time now, can we do it maybe next Tuesday? I'd love to share with you next Tuesday. I've got a little bit of time. And, and try to get a better time to do it, but don't push people away. Be perceptive to other problems of life that are going on. Um, again, listen to people. Don't you and I do all the talking. Listen to others as they talk. You'll hear cues. You'll hear things that are important, and you can you can somehow take those and, and really begin to minister to them in a deeper way if you'll just listen to the heartbreak sometimes, the problems, the stress that they're dealing with at work. Um, and right now, especially, ladies and gentlemen, people are about to go crazy in our cities over this COVID issue. I mean, you know what's going on. I know what's going on. I mean, city fathers are locking businesses down, and they're, they're hurting, desperately hurting. I heard today that um, the guy who does the show Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, uh, I forgot his name, but uh, this man on his own went out and raised something like $30 million and gave it all away to all the people who work in the restaurant industry. And he got corporate sponsors. He got people that knew him from his show. Uh, obviously, he's on TV, so he had an audience that you and I don't have. But, but the point is, here's a guy who said, I've got to do something. This is what I do for a living. I, I make my living on going into restaurants and trying their food and all that, and now they're hurting, and he saw an opportunity, and he did something. You talk about an open door. If, if we as believers would just take the initiative and listen to what's going on, and then try to meet the need. Tommy Barnett, who, gosh, was a dear, dear friend of mine many, many years ago. I haven't seen Tommy in years. He pastored a great church in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, thousands and thousands of people. And Tommy used to say to us all the time, listen, find a need and meet it. If you really want to just boil it down to something very simple, find a need and meet it. And what he did when he got to Phoenix, he found out that there were a lot of very, very poor people who didn't have transportation, could not go to church, wanted to be in church, just couldn't go to church. The man went crazy buying buses, just started buying bus after bus after bus and filling them up and filling them up and has probably the largest bus ministry in the United States of America. I mean, they bus in thousands and thousands of people to the church every week, just, and they're still doing it. I mean, Phoenix First Assembly, Tommy is, Tommy is kind of the CEO over other things that are going on. He's got a son that uh, is running the Dream Center in Los Angeles. Uh, he's got another son who's running the church right now in Phoenix, but um, just find a need, he said, and meet the need, and we would do well, folks, if we would really do that. And then finally, just let me conclude this tonight with the last thing after being perceptive is be polite. Be polite. It's an art that is almost lost today, isn't it? We, when somebody is really polite, you ever notice how heads turn? Like, did somebody just say that? I mean, you know, we, we're just not, we're, we're so, um, 
we're just so preoccupied with our world and myself and what's important to me and so forth that we forget that just a little bit of kindness goes a long, long way. And, and you know, I, I, look at, I look at the stories of people like Mother Teresa. Uh, here is a uh, Roman Catholic nun. Of course, she's passed away now many years ago, but a Roman Catholic nun who I was told came from wealth in India and took a vow of poverty to serve others. And Mother Teresa, her whole life, went out and did nothing but help those that were helpless. In fact, she would stay among the lepers and those that were like the sick of the sick, where some people just would not even go around them. She loved them. She touched them. She ministered to them. And her whole life was literally given as a, as a devotion to the Lord, just touching people. Now, the reason I say that is, I don't know if you thought about this. If you look at some of Time Magazine's greatest people of the year, you would not think that they would be the greatest people. How could a Roman Catholic little old lady end up as like the woman of the year? I'll tell you why. Because we still value people touching and loving people. It's very, very important. And there are so many examples um, of, of people who have just gone out of their way and done something that helped other people, and, and they got notoriety for it. Now, we don't do it for notoriety, obviously. We do it for the Lord and for the kingdom, but it works. Be polite. Um, the way you talk, don't yell. Don't, don't be aggressive. Um, let your speech be seasoned with salt, as the Scripture says. Uh, we need to, um, I've seen people sometimes when they're witnessing, they're, I don't know how to say this other than they're goofing off. They're, they're doing things that just are not appropriate. Stay focused, as we said earlier. Um, our speech should always be right and, and not, uh, nothing to taint it or to make people think that, we're, um, that we're, we're not sincere. So we need to be extremely careful and very complimentary of, of everybody that we meet. So those are some thoughts that I had tonight that I think will help all of us as we are looking for men and women to share our faith with, or even young people. Uh, young people today, listen, suicides are up. Um, there's, uh, there's a sense of hopelessness, hopelessness everywhere you go today. People are really getting concerned. We have a dear friend up in New England who has pastored his whole life, I mean his whole life, and um, having some issues now, he's in a, he went into a hospital, uh, they got COVID, um, he has now been in a hospital for, I believe, three months, if I'm not mistaken, between a hospital and rehab, and I talked to his wife the other day, and I said, how is, how is pastor? And she said, you know, Joe, he, sometimes he's fine, you're talking, he's normal, and then other times, you don't even know who you're talking to. And she said, I, it's scary, but she said, I asked the doctor, what is going on? You know what the doctor told her? It's very common in people who have been in a hospital for any length of time who are disconnected from loved ones. He hasn't, seen, he hasn't even seen his wife. They won't let his wife come visit him up in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Everything's closed down, 100%. Here's a man who is just laying in a hospital bed hurting, and there's really not a, I mean, I, I think he, could, he should probably be home, to be quite honest with you, but his mind is changing because of what's happening in the isolation and so on. People are hurting everywhere. It is time for us, as God's people, to say, Lord, use us in any way that you see fit and help us to share our faith with those around us, those that we know and those that we don't know. Help us to share our faith and to bring people to the knowledge of Christ. And I'll just conclude by saying this. If you'll just go back to the time you were saved. Now, I don't know what your testimony is, but um, maybe you grew up in the church and you received Jesus as a very young boy or girl. That's, that happens all the time. I'm grateful for that. But maybe, you're, maybe you were like I was. Maybe you were, um, maybe you're already in your 20s, or maybe even beyond. I was in my 20s when I came to the Lord, very early 20s, actually. 
And um, I can remember so vividly those days. I remember people sharing with me the, the gospel. I remember the sincerity, and, and I was in the military. And I remember the men that, that would go out of their way and say, what do you need, Joe? How can we help you? Uh, we're meeting at the chapel tonight at 7 o'clock. Why don't you come join us, and we'll, we'll just sit down and talk. And, and those, were, those were foundational days. Those were great days. And they really helped me, and they helped a lot of other guys. And I have to tell you, in the battalion that I served, we saw somewhere between 50 and 100 men come to Jesus out of a group of 500 in my battalion, 50 to 100. I, I, have, I have a picture of me on Guam with about 50 Seabees, sailors, 50 sailors who were there that I was leading a Bible study with. These are just great guys. And those, those days, again, were just so absolutely incredible. So I just want to encourage you as we close tonight. I'm so glad you tuned in. We're going to uh, be right back at it next Wednesday. We're going to conclude this on soul winning and hopefully stimulate or challenge or stir us a little bit to say, Lord, we, we just want to do this again. Yeah, I just wanted to be like the, the 60s and 70s, the Jesus movement, where it was just so easy to share our faith and, and see people come to Christ. We want to see it again. I believe God's going to visit us in that way again. And we're going to need you to join us. And if we all share, uh, it's amazing what God will do. Remember, Sunday morning, 1030, right here, we're going to continue our message on what Christmas is all about. Uh, you don't want to miss this. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Keep praying for Pastor Philip and Denise. We're believing that God's going to just raise them right up, uh, I, I, believe, I believe, very quickly. And they'll be back together with us before you know it. We miss them so much. We're appreciative of their leadership and all that they do. And, and uh, we've got to stand in the gap for them now. That's our leaders, and we're going to just bless them and honor them. And they're going to be back soon. So see you Sunday at 1030 and then next Wednesday at uh, 630, and we'll conclude this message. God bless you.